Hey guys, it's the Gwen Sitter again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the videos on Oculus and I'm going to be continuing the VR Draw experiment that I've been working on. As many of you know, I've been working on a TCP server and also a TCP client. I did a TCP server in .NET Core, then we did a TCP client as a console application and then one of the last videos was focusing on the TCP client but in Unity. So what I'm going to show you today is how I can send information over to the TCP server and how we can get back that information in Unity. So let's jump into Unity and let's start looking at it. All right guys, so let me show you what I have so far for my TCP client in Unity and also how I can talk to the TCP server. So I'm just gonna show you what I have so far and then we're gonna be looking at some of the code and some of the implementation that I have so far. Also keep in mind that there's a lot of things that I still need to do, such as doing retries if something happened and I lose a packet. So there's a lot of things that I still need to work out, but for now, this is gonna be a good introduction to how, how you can communicate via TCP to a server from within Unity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just resize Unity and then show you what I have so far. And then I'm also gonna pull the, the server which I have on the left side. So I show you how the TCP server works. I also open source it. It's in github.com, Dilmer V. So if you don't have that, I'm gonna put it in the uh, in basically in the description of this video so you can download it if you like and also use it if you like to. So what I wanna show you is, this is basically where it's stored right now. And when you clone the TCP server, it's also going to include a client. So if I do ls, and actually let me go back, and you can see that it has a TCP server. It also has a console TCP server that we can use for testing. And then I also have the Unity TCP client, which is the one that I'm basically, I basically created a project for that, just to show you how that works. So what I did on this video is I implemented the TCP, the Unity TCP client on my project, which is the VR drawing application that I'm creating. And I wanted to find out if I could send information over to the TCP server and how fast that information could be processed and how fast it would send the information back to the clients. And I was actually very surprised and I also have to keep in mind that this server is running locally. So if you're running on the cloud, it's going to be different. And then there's other complications that are going to, you know, they're going to appear as I, as I implement this and as I put it in the cloud. So, but those are things that we're going to be looking at as I make more progress on this game. So for now, let's just keep it simple and see how we can send information over. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you what happens if the server is not running. And I'm also going to... So we're going to be focusing on this on the network on the network view that's another thing that i added i wanted to see what was happening so if i were to hit play you're going to see that it's going to try to connect to the server and we're going to get an error because the server the server is not running so we're getting a connection refuse so if i go ahead and start the server so i'm going to go into tcp server and then i'm going to do a dot net run this server is going to run on, on the address 127.0.0.1, which is going to be our local host, and it's going to start waiting for connections. So as soon as I hit play, it's going to attempt, the client in Unity is going to attempt to connect to the server. And then the first thing that it's going to do is going to say, okay, did I, did I send all the points coordinates that I have from Unity to the server? And then it didn't find that it sent anything, so it sent the, what it has on the array. And I'm going to show you how this works. So. Right now, what I'm sending is just basically a point. It's, it's gonna be an array of points. The reason why I decided to do an array of points is because I'm going to be creating lines. And when I'm drawing, I'm basically always storing X, Y, and Z. And I need an array because if you leave, let's say that I'm drawing and then I stop drawing and I create another line, I need to create a new array of points because I need to store each, basically each independent, each independent line on its own. So that's what I made it an array of points. And I might need to refactor this as well because right now it is an array of points. But if I want to store multiple lines, I'm gonna to have to create another layer that is gonna allow me to create basically multiple lines at once. For now, I think this works fine. So let's say that I wanted to send, I wanted to send more information. So right now the client is running and he's saying, okay, do I have anything that I need to send? Do I have anything that I need to send? And he hasn't found anything that he needs to send, so it's not taking the time to send anything to the server. So if I go into my TCP controller client, I have multiple options. I also have a TCP data controller and I'll show that in a minute as well. For now, this is gonna be the one that is doing most of the works. This is the client saying, okay, can I connect to the server? 
and have I sent all my data to the server? And right now it, it thinks that it did and that's why it hasn't sent anything else. So some of the options that I have in here that I can that I can customize and they are exposed to the inspector is I can now set the IP address and it's dynamic. So if I change the IP address on the server, I can basically change the, the IP address right here on the TCP controller client. The other thing that I also expose is the port number. So I know that this is running on 13,000. So that is the, the port that I'm specifying. The other thing that I also wanted to do is I wanted to basically have the information information shown and that information is basically what I'm getting back from the server. The server said, okay, yeah, I'm going to let you connect. And yes, I did get these points. This is this client. And then I received these points. So let's say that another client connects. So what's going to happen is this client is going to get notified saying, okay, yeah, I did get another client connected. And then I'm going to get the information from that client. Right now, I don't have a way to pair anybody. So let's say that client one connects and then client two connects. I'm just going to get the information from client one and client two. If I get 10 clients, I'm going to get all the information from the 10 clients. So that's really not going to be realistic because I want to I want to basically pair with somebody if I'm going to draw. So let's say that John Doe is connecting and he wants to draw with me. I want to pair with John Doe and we're going to be drawing together. I don't want to get the points from somebody else that is not in my session. So those are going to be some of the things that we need to still implement. We need to also implement a way to log in. So if I want to log in and authenticate, make sure that I am authenticating correctly, nobody's hacking and sending a bunch of points that are really not what I'm drawing. So there's just a lot of complications that come in whenever we're we're working on on you know TCP or or even on a REST client type of server. So there's always going to be those type of things that we need to account for. So right now what I want to show you is how the TCP TCP control client works. Let's say right now I have just one point in the array and you can see that in here. Let's say that I draw another point in the array and I make that to be two. It's currently it's waiting, it's waiting to, to find out if something changed. So if I were to change the, the time that this is waiting and it looks like I'm not working because this is not, let's see, the number must be not negative and oh, okay, I know, I know what that is because it needs to be a positive number. So I think I have an issue right now because this is not sending information. So let me try, let me try this one more time. So I'm still, the server is still up and then it looks like it's, you know, it got the information. If I change this to be maybe a larger number, you can see that the way that this is working right now, this is waiting one second before it sends the information. So because I'm changing a point, it knows that I changed a point and the reason why it's thinking that this is client two is because the server is storing a dictionary and in that dictionary it's just basically incrementing. So that's something that I still need to fix. You need to identify me as a user and not be incrementing me with a client ID. So I can change this and, and you can see how the points are getting over to the server. And also this is broadcasting the points that I'm getting back. And then you can see the points are getting back here into Unity. But it's really slow, right? Like I, it's it takes one second in order in order for it to update. So that's why I have this wait time sync. So and if I, it looks like I have a I have a typo in there that I need to fix. Instead, I change this to be 10 milliseconds, and you can see that now the server is synchronizing much faster. I can also say, okay, I have a I have 10. The point on the array is gonna be is gonna be 10, and that means that I have 10 different points that I'm that I'm storing. Say so that I want to change so you can see how the server is getting the information and it just looks like the matrix because it's just printing a ton of information. So that's how this works. Let me go ahead and, and kill the server, restart the server so we can start clean. And then I'm going to say, well, my client is going to be just a much larger client. doesn't really matter because the server is still treating me with a count of one and you can see that that's, that's the case. So if I wanted to change this to be one, then you're going to see that this is much faster now because it is only waiting one millisecond before it can send any data. So it's just doing comparison on the data that it has sent versus the data. that. It, so I'm storing, I'm storing the information as of right now. And then when I send it, I store the previ previous information that was sent. And then I just do a comparison to see if the data changed. If the data changed, then I send the information over to the server. And then I get, that's why I get the information shown on the server side. 
and I apologize if I'm talking really fast it's just there's a lot going on in here so that's how the server works this should work with you know a, any type of data type right now I'm just sending JSON and then I'm storing JSON on my site so let me go ahead and focus on unity now so that's how the server works and that's how the client can connect so I'm going to show you let me just make this big so a couple of things that I did in here, and you saw it as I was showing you the data, I created a network area, and then let me go ahead and go into 2D. So this is basically where I'm going to be displaying the information. I have a background. I also have a title, which is the network info. And I also have the output that is the information that is getting displayed from the information that I'm getting from the server. So as far as like the UI, the UI didn't really change that much. I just rearranged a couple of things in here. The other things that I that I did change, I added a TCP controller client, and then this is the one that is responsible for connecting to the server, and then getting the information from the server, and then dispatching the information to the main thread so that Unity can also render that information. So let me show you some of that implementation by going into VS Code. So let me go ahead and show you that. So what I have right now is I have a networking folder and in this folder, I'm basically putting everything that I'm, that has to do with networking. And there's a lot in here. I know that I'm not going to be able to teach you everything, but I'm going to be able to show you everything without, you know, without problems, because I, I think something like this can apply to many kind of experiences and knowing what is available. I think it's a great thing. So a couple of, couple of things that I, I walk you through in the in the previous video is I told you that I'm, that you you need to use a dispatcher. and the reason why I need to use a dispatcher is because you can't really communicate with a main thread from another thread because Unity is not thread safe. So I explained this on the previous video, so make sure that you go through that video, but just, just know that the way that this communicates with the main thread is by having a queue of actions. So when the main thread has time to process this action, it's going to basically check, okay, do I have any actions that I need to process? If I do, it basically calls the queue on the actions to pull one of those actions from the queue, and then it invokes that action. So that's basically how this works. So I have a dispatcher in here. The, the other thing that I have as well is I show you this on the previous video. I did a video on Unity events, and I wanted to also create Unity events that are going to help me in basically updating information. So I have a client points change, which takes in a client ID and a vector tree. I have a client points and color change, which is going to take a client ID, a color, and a vector tree. And then I also have a client connector that is ba basically takes a client ID. The reason why I have this in place is because I know I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them when, whenever I need to update you know, the client information and I need to send new points. I changed the data structure because I didn't want to rely on vector tree. Vector tree is part of the Unity engine. So if you go into it, you're going to notice that there's just a lot of things that Unity is doing for us. And I don't want to have to store all this information and send this information to the server because there's a lot of information on Vector3. So instead, I created my own data, my, my own structure, and that's what I'm going to show you next. So the information that you saw on the, on the server, which I already, I already cleared out, it's basically a, a payload. So the payload right now, it's a, it's a draw point. And let me just show you that drop point on the right hand side. And I'm just going to collapse this so you can see both. So what I need to store for this game, for these experiences, is going to be a point in, in basically world, world space that is going to have X, Y, and Z. So on the right side, you can see the structure that I have. It's just a class with a constructor that takes in an integer on X, Y, and Z, which is going to be the point that I'm drawing at a specific time. And then I also have public fields that are where I'm storing that information. The, the one on the left is going to be an array of points because if I draw one point, that's fine. But if I, if I need to draw a line, a, dry, a line is going to be composed of many draw points. So just imagine having a point right here and then you're basically drawing a curve. So that curve is going to be represented by an array of draw points. Let me go back into, so that's what, th those are two of the models that I have right now. I'm going to need more because I'm going to have to also store which color is the line composed of because I allow that. I also allow changing the minimum value of when to draw a line because sometimes I draw a line that is, that is more, it's not as curve, doesn't have as much curvature. So in those cases, I need to change the minimum. 
and that minimum is going to is going to allow us to determine okay at what point do I draw do I draw a new point so that's going to be some of the information that I still need to store in some of these models so for now that's that's what I have and then the other piece that I also had let me make sure that I, I did show you the events the other piece that is going to take most of this tutorial and this demonstration is going to be my TCP controller client so I show you this client in the GitHub repo that I have. In fact, I can show it to you right now, just so you know that it's, it's almost identical, except I have a couple more features. So if I go into my, my GitHub, you can see some of the people have down, there's some people already liking the server, TCP server and client, but anyways, that's out of this conversation. So. If you notice, I have some examples in here. Okay, if you need to start the TCP server, if you need to if you need to launch a Unity TCP client, this is what you need to do. If you need to use a console TCP client, this is what you need to do. So the implementation that I have right now in my VR draw experience comes from this T Unity TCP client. If you go into assets and we go into scripts, and you're gonna see that I have a dispatcher, that's gonna be the dispatcher that I have right here. I also have a TCP client, which is going to be this TCP control client. I didn't want to name it TCP client. I just named it TCP control client because it's going to be doing more than just a TCP, TCP client. In this instance, it is a TCP client because it's only communicating with the server and then getting that information back to Unity. So this is basically what, where I copy most of my stuff from, which is from my implementation on the TCP server and client. Okay, so let me show you a couple of things that I have. So I have the server IP address, which is has, has a default. And most of these fields are serializable so that I can modify them through the inspector. I also have a port. I have a basically a text mesh pro UGUI, which is basically what I use to display information in Unity. I have, for now, I hard coded the client ID, which is set to one. I have, I noticed that this was misspelled, so let me fix that. This is just sync, wait time sync. So this value is really important because that's how frequently I'm going to be checking whether the previous value is different than the current value. And by that, if I change, let's say, a point in a curve, if if the curve change, I know that the data structure change, so I need to send it over to the server. So this is how long it waits before it does the, the next check. So it's really important that you look at the value because if you go really low, you can really hit performance. So make sure that you're looking at your you know your network and also your performance the color here it's going to be the color of the the color that i store for the line right now i'm not using it but i'm going to be using it in the next few days then i also talked to you about the the payload so the payload is going to be the drop payload is going to be what i'm sending to the server so that's what i'm storing in here and i also made it serializable because i wanted to change that through the inspector and then I also have a previous payload, and this is this is what I check to see if the current payload change, then and it's different than the previous payload that I sent to the server. Then I know that I need to send it to the server. And then because we're using threads, we want to make sure that we have an object that we can use to to safely, if that's a word, talk to basically talk to that draw payload. If you don't have this and you try to access uh, the this information from a different thread you meet you need to make sure that you're locking because if you're not locking it's not the the thread it's not going to be able to drive to that so that's how you basically can can update information from one thread to another thread i was losing my words in there but that's why that that's why i have an object in here for my lock and then the first thing that i do is i get a dispatcher so that's what i'm getting i'm basically getting the singleton and then I, in the star method, I basically spawn a new thread. And then that new thread runs in the background. And I also call this connect line, which is the same connect line that I show you in GitHub. I pass in the server IP address. I pass in the port. I pass in the client ID that identifies me as a client and also the payload as it is right now. This message right here is what I use to call back into Unity and say, OK, Unity, this is the information that I got from the server, so display it. And then the connect to client is going to be a little more, more in depth, but I'll show you what it does. So I have a TCP client, which comes from system.net that sockets TCP client. I pass in the server, also the port. I also get the stream from the client so that we know if, so basically it opens up a pipe 
and that pipe says, okay, do I have any information that I need to that I need to be aware of? So this network stream basically allows us to communicate back and forth between the server and then the server can be communicated with us. So then the first thing that I do, okay, did I connect with the did, I, did the client connect with the server? So if it did, then I get into here. If I didn't, I basically throw, I don't think I throw an exception, but I just just thinking about this, I probably need to do something different where I should probably say, okay, I, let me actually do it right now. And let me just do, that way I can, I can breathe and take a break. <laughs> okay, so here we can say, we can do, we can call dispatcher instance in queue, and in queue a message we can say, okay, the, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, client couldn't, could, could not establish, we can just say could not connect to the server, I think that that's fine, and I don't think I'm doing three dots. Let me see what I'm doing with the client ID. Okay, I'm doing that, and then just the message. Okay, so I don't need to, I don't need to specify a client ID in here because I'm passing it in here. Okay, so that is that piece. So the first, the first thing that I do if I get connected, I basically send that information over, and looks like I am. Let me make sure. I think I'm doing this twice. Yeah, I don't need to do. I don't need to have the client ID in here. So I can just say connect it to server because the client ID, it's gonna be passing and then that's the first thing that we're gonna be displaying. So connect it to server is fine and then server and port. And then I basically have a while loop. Inside of this while loop, I'm always setting it to true unless, you know, unless we get disconnected or we don't have any more data. So let me, let me see what I'm doing here because I'm just thinking about yeah, I just I just leave it I just leave it connected for now. At some point we're gonna have to disconnect because and this is gonna be more of a game state. So if the game state changes and I don't want to draw with somebody anymore or the session ended, I'm gonna have to basically disconnect gracefully. So for now this is just gonna keep it connected. And then I told you about logs. That's what I'm using a log because this is actually running from a different thread. That's the first thing that we did in here. We started a new thread. So you need to log and make sure that we, because you can't really talk to that draw payload unless you're doing a log. If I don't have that log, this is actually not gonna work because this is in a, this is in a different thread. So the first thing that I do is I know the points that I have as default, so I'm gonna convert them to JSON, create a payload, and then I'm gonna check, okay, is the previous payload doesn't equal to the new payload, and it shouldn't equal because this hasn't even been set. So the first time around, this is gonna be sent to the server and then the first thing that I do, I set previous equal, equal to new. That way, if this checks again, they're gonna be equal, so I don't need to send it again to the server. And then I basically connect the pay, convert the payload to bytes, and I store uh, basically a byte array, and then I write to the stream. I also you know, call my dispatcher, I send them a message, which then gets into the action queue, and then I show the payload that I sent to the server, and then I also create a byte of 256. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to increment some of these if I start to send a lot of information to the server. So for now, 256 is fine. And then I also, this is for my response. So I create a byte of 256. I read, basically I read that from the stream and I convert the data that I'm getting from the stream back to ASCII, which then converts it to string. And then I basically say, okay, this is the data that I receive. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically, okay, did I get any information from the server? And then in this case, I'm writing to the server. And in fact, I can probably just do something like this. I could say send information to the server. That's what we're doing, right? And then here we're saying receiving information from the server or getting information from the server. Okay, and then I'm just saying, okay, go ahead and send this information back to Unity so that Unity can display it. And then I show you the wait time sync. So if I set it to a lower number, this is not gonna sleep, it's just gonna keep, you know, if it's 10 milliseconds, it's gonna wait for 10 milliseconds and then do a new check. If I wait longer, then it's gonna be longer. So this just really depends on what you're trying to implement. For me, I'm gonna have to do more of a 100 milliseconds kind of wait time if I want the, the, the drawing to look realistic. And that's gonna be a number that is gonna to have to change based on my testing. 
So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys. I know that I cover a lot of information and I'm, a, I'm actually losing my, my voice right now. But if you guys have any questions about what I just showed you, and also keep in mind, I told you that already, but make sure that you check it out if you want to download it and try it on your own. I have a project in here for the server and also a project, a Unity project where you can test the client. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you much for watching. Again, I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources and forums for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.